Hello everyone, this is Danish from jobskillshare.org. In our last video, we have uh, configured kind of like a business environment network and we got the connection from a router to switch and everything was working fine. But now we are going to have a new request. A boss came in and told us that there are two employees that he hired in somewhere South Africa. And you need to give them access to the files that we are actually locally uh, you know saving and doing things so they need to connect to our network basically and they need to be able to RDP meaning remote desktop connection directly from their machines to the servers or wherever they want to and they need to be able to do things directly not through the web based so this is called VPN virtual private network now in the companies there are so many different solutions but I'm going to show you one solution that's freely available and it's very powerful and you can use it so that is what we are going to achieve from this of course you can go to the site and you can think of anything after that it's a very vast area but for now the the situation is simple you want to give access to these two people that are in South Africa they need to connect to your network so if the first thing if I check right now I have two connections going on if I show you this is our office network right here on the right side you guys see this server that I'm on that's office network this one right here is the South Africa okay I'm gonna just say SA so we need to basically connect these two together through virtual private network this is not a Cisco thing by the way if somebody's looking into it I'll, I'll teach more about that this is just a how can you convert the server into a, a, a pretty powerful server so then it can connect these guys right here they're sitting here somewhere with the laptop and they need to basically connect back here directly not through the web browser okay so that's the whole goal of this video so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing I want to show you that I'm not on the same network if I come here and I do IP config you see I get an address which is the IPv6 address and then I get this address from 43 192 168 43 248 it's a different network this is even a, the whole ISP is different this is actually connected to one of my phone network basically and if you look at this one if I come here and do CMD how do you find IP address again IP config I mean this is a basic interview questions if you don't know this trust me you're not gonna get job so here you see 168.2.2 and here we have 43 dot 248 so let's test it if we can ping it just to make sure that this is doesn't work it will not work this is like you're locally this these are local addresses you're basically telling this computer to locally find this this address that we're trying to it's gonna go out there of course it's not gonna see anything and here you can do the same thing it will not be able to uh, find that address on the left so if I do ping 192.168.2. Sorry, what am I doing? Uh, 43.248. And of course, it's not going to find anything. Okay. So the goal here is let's just create something. We're going to go to document, and here we're going to click share folder. We're going to call it SF South Africa. We the boss wanted to share some files so they can just quickly connect to VPN and just get to these files. Now, like I said, there, there are many ways you can do this. But this is kind of like a normal, quick way, secure way. If you want to do things quickly, uh, then this would be a better option rather than doing a full web-based type of thing. So I'm going to first right-click on it. And for to make it easy, I'm just going to click share with everybody for now. You know, I'm going to do share and we're going to just pick everybody for now because this is not a domain connected environment so we need to uh, just do this for now so right now you see the server name is remote 2 slash sf okay and in that we are going to just put one file in here remember these are two different machines this is a remote 2 this is the another machine local machine so I'm connected to that machine through a remote session by using another remote tool 
I mean, let's make it more confusing. Don't worry. Don't even think about the bottom one. Remote control session. Don't even think about that. That's just me because I need two machines to show you in a real world environment. I don't like to do this stuff on a virtual stuff. So this is a real stuff right here. Okay. So the first thing what we need to do, we need to go to the website and we need to open a new window. And we need to first turn this server into a VPN server. Okay. How do you do that? I'm going to show you one uh, VPN project that it's very uh, famous for a lot of people that use it. If you come here, this is a pretty advanced stuff right here. But you can make it very simple for yourself if you follow my directions. You can come here and read everything about soft ether and VPN and check the reviews and everything. But I, it's probably one of the, the VPN that can compete with anything in right now. So here you're going to click on download. And when you go to download, you're going to click on download soft ether VPN. Now, before you do this high warning, you don't want to do this in, the, in, the, in your production environment where you're working. This is going to be a no-no for a lot of people. If they have a VPN system and you put another VPN, then they will think that you're trying to steal something. This is only for you to learn things and you now have another way to tackle a situation like this. You can go to the boss and say, I have another solution because your VPN just went down. It sucks. So I got another solution. It's just that. My whole teaching is about you opening your mind, you thinking like an IT professional. Now you know that there is another thing available and you can find something like this more and more and more to become a better IT professional. This is all I do in my videos, okay? This is why I talk a lot. So you're going to... VPN, VPN server, and then you do Windows. You're going to come down and then you're going to download this. Now, I probably downloaded this already. So here, I'm going to download it. You see it's downloaded. I'm going to open it and run it. So, this will open up right now. and We're going to click Next. And what do you want to install? It has other features too. We're going to do server, basic server. And then click next, 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 and next. So we're basically configuring the server piece right now because we want these guys that are sitting there, they're calling us, they're like, when is it going to be done? Bugging us, but we're working on it, okay? So now we need to connect, basically. This server is on right now. We need to connect. By clicking on connect, it's going to ask you for username and password. And then it will ask you, what is the host name that you want to give this this server so then you can click on on the host name you can put anything i put it jss temp lab temp lab right here now i'm going to delete this because then it's going to confuse you the how did you do all of this stuff so i'm going to delete it because once you install it and run this system it basically kind of like capture everything so if i come here before this, you will get another prompt and make sure you just name that host name. The host name is this right here on the bottom. Now, you don't want to name it the same thing. It won't work. You want to use your own host name. As soon as you install this, this VPN is listening on port 443-992-1194 and 5555. Usually, by default, these ports are open in the companies because they have all the traffic that goes through these ports, secure ports. This is a very secure stuff too. Now, I'm going to create a virtual hub. This is like you're telling the server who can connect to which hub. Maybe you have 50 people and you want to create different hubs for each and every person or maybe 5 people or 10 people, just like VLANs. So, you're going to click here and we're going to create, we're going to call it, let's say, VPN Lab. And we're going to give it a password to this uh, virtual hub we're going to give it a password it's a little slow because of my connection like I said I'm using a phone connection so it's a little slow and that's why I wanted to test it on real two different connections if you're working this on an internal network then you may have issues so make sure you have two different connections when you do this stuff but it may work in your internal stuff too. Another important thing in this is that you need to then double click on this and then you need to manage virtual hub because you need to create a user who need to connect because these users are going to be connecting to this. Now, 
you want to make it more advanced, you can create an Active Directory environment, meaning everything will be automatically done, but that's out of this lab right now. We're just creating simple these two users right now. We're going to create one for now. And we're going to call it, let's say, Dani. And we're going to give it a password. Normal, basic stuff. So right now we created Dani. And we're saying that Dani can come here and he can use password authentication, which is a standard way of getting to the server. We're just going to click OK. Dani is created now in this system. But another thing that we need to do, we need to close this because this this server has its own network if you guys remember that 192 2.2 on the top right here this is the network that we want to be connecting here on the left side so we need to basically bridge that network card with this system so you're going to click on local bridge settings then if it's already there i'm going to remove it and i'm going to add that virtual hub first i'm going to name that and then that network card is actually using Ethernet 2. If you remember from my first lab that I created this whole thing, make sure you watch my first lab. I'm going to put it in the description too. I, it, we give this Ethernet connection through our router and switch. So it has that DHCP, everything is already working. So when I click OK, what will happen after this? When we basically create this bridge, we're going to say OK. And it's going to start operating. Right now, it's listening to connections. Anyone try to connect to this virtual hub is going to get an IP address from our router. How cool is that? I mean, that's just amazing like what this can do for you. So now we have everything is configured on our server end. We don't need to do anything else. Now we need to basically go to our client machine, which is in South Africa. And then we need to install client. So let's go to Firefox and download the client. And I probably already did that. So same similar way, you're gonna go to the soft ether, uh, soft ether, download, and you're gonna click on client. Let me show you quickly. So when you go to the soft ether site, you're gonna click on download. It's a little slow, like I said. Um, and then you're gonna come to this point. You're gonna click on freeware, and you're gonna click client here. And then you will click on platform windows if you're using linux another one and download the client i already did this it's right here so i am going to go ahead and run it and just show you now this is my client machine on the south african network i'm not on this remember i'm remoting into this server from this machine so this is totally different two different networks right now on the left side this is in south africa and the other one, I'm going to put it like this way so I can make it a little better. And this one is somewhere in my office. And now I need to install my client in South African laptops or servers or desktop, whatever they want to use. So now we're going to click next, next, next and finish that. And once it's done, we need to then tell this client to connect to this virtual lab virtual vpn lab hub by using that username that we have created so here i'm not sure what happened uh but uh the voice got disconnected but we got the client installed now and now we're going to add a connection as you can see and we're going to name the connection we're just naming it the same virtual hub name vpn lab you can name it anything but here you need to make sure you give the host name that host name that you have given in the in the beginning and also if you open the server it's right on the bottom you can actually get it from there so it's going to say jsstemplab.softether.net in your case whatever you have given that name so you see on the bottom i'm pointing it right there uh, that you can get it from there and i will just point it so we're going to get that name now and the port is going to be 443 you can use the other port but 443 is basically kind of the normal standard and that that's where you're going to put vpn lab and the username we have created in the password right so after this what will happen we are going to click ok and then right click on it and connect it as you can see it's going to go out to that server and it's going to say okay i'm authenticated i'm going to request for dhcp remember 
and get the IP address from that network. So it went out there, it talked to the server, the, the server said that we have a DHCP already in our system, that DHCP is gonna give you an IP address, and here you go, we, we gave it to you. So now I'm gonna say, okay, let's ping again, ping 192.168.2.2, before it wasn't working, now it should work. South Africa, pe people are happy, they are jumping right now that we got connected, it's time to get to work. So now, after that, basically, they can do anything. They can remote into our local network. Any machines that we have given access to them, they can do that. They can open a file share, just like the one we have created. I'm going to show you that in a second. They can do that. Everything that's possible right now for them, just like they are sitting inside their network with using this type of VPN connection. This is not a web-based connection. Okay? So I'm going to make it move a little bit more faster here and explain it a little bit more so this is the type of stuff again i'm going to give you warning that you don't want to use this in the production environment without like asking people and here i'm showing basically like you know what you can do with this like you know you you have tcp stuff going on you have local bridging going on, you have networking going on you can learn a lot of stuff from just this one vpn system because this is the stuff that you have been learning so much in your network plus lab and everything and here something happened to my other connection this is the one that i'm being using a, another client to get into the other machine and something happened because i was using a cell phone network so maybe it was just too slow and kind of gave up on me but um that's fine we were not worried about it we were look we we, we lost a connection here it's a really good example we lost something in there but did i lose a connection to my server where i was connected from south africa no, I didn't because now I'm basically showing you slash slash remote to the, the folder that I created on that server for the share uh, to be shared with you guys, the South African guys. And it's right there. Now, it didn't ask me for username and password because I already did that. In your case, it's going to ask you. You have to put either a domain connected environment username and password or you have to put the, u the server name first. Like let's say remote to slash whatever the username is. And then you will enter and you're going to get that. And here you can see the status of this, uh, you know, connection. Just like any other VPN client, you know. But again, the story of this, let me remind you again that my teaching is all about giving you an idea. And you can implement this. You can play around with this. At least you now have something in the mind that you can do stuff like this. If something goes down, critical stuff is going down with the network. And somebody needs to get in there with an alternative method. Or maybe somebody is in conventions or something like that. Your CEO needs a direct access. They're like, man, who's going to do all this web-based stuff? It's slow network here. Let me just do the connection, directly connection. Is that fast enough? And you may be able to give them a solution there. Because like I said, even on a slow network, this has been working pretty nice. I, I was able to get to my files very quickly, even though I'm not doing too much heavy work, but I can do my file stuff very quickly. And here I disconnected it again just to show you when I disconnected my client, I'm done. I was out. Now, on the other hand, on the server, that person can also disconnect you. If they say that, okay, I don't want the South African guys to be now accessing my network. I'm done with this project. They can totally remove that. And then that's it. Done. So this is what I wanted to share with you guys in this video. If you like it, let me know. If you like these type of videos, I will share more. Uh, and I'll see you in a different video. Thank you.